it's single sided. Right? Well, Mike's ever get his ears on straight now? No, what? Mike's ever got him straight now? Not that yet. I don't think so, yeah. After that, uh, after you showed me that little part, uh, that was the last I heard about it. Probably the right place.
pulled up your textbook right there that you've got in front of me. Yeah, just sort of hold it up. Oh, this yeah. is Yeah, just take a look. Yeah, compare. <laughs> okay, I'd like to welcome everybody. Um, welcome aboard. Um, this is a sort of a roster list here, and we won't use it at the moment. We'll go to this thing called Smartboard. Um, and I'd like to welcome you uh, to the best free math courses that you hopefully will ever going to be taking, and they're called Math 009. say, wait a minute, just a moment, I only signed up for one course, but that's what you thought, and you thought you signed up for Math 103. Um, these top three courses are the sequence that we used to teach until recently. It was our standard college algebra sequence. You had arithmetic, introductory algebra, and then you had the real college algebra course that would transfer to other universities and would satisfy your degree of retirement. So you worked your way up to the stages. Lifetime or two for some people. Um, three semesters, clearly, you can get up there. And there was a placement test to decide just where you should begin anyway. And we actually had a math of 01 down there off the board, too. Uh, I've taught all of these a few times. And then a few years ago, the general of the Air Force uh, called up the general of Maryland and said he didn't want this anymore. He didn't want his troops tied up for that long. He wanted there to be one and done math course. Satisfy your degree requirements, transfer to other universities, and you're done with one course. Aye. And General Maryland knew how impossible that was um, to condense three courses into one. So he said to the General of the Air Force, yes, sir. That was it. Uh, but the uh, Air Force General wasn't done. He said, I also don't like this idea of a placement test. I want an open door policy. Anybody can come in and take the course he wants to. So once again, yes, sir, whatever you say. So we created the course Math 103, which satisfies those stipulations. So um, good news is that it's three courses crammed into one. So if you thought you had any life outside this course for the next eight weeks, well, you might want to reconsider it, because that was one of the prices that we paid. But the General of Maryland realized how hard it was going to be to teach a class without a placement test, because you're going to have people coming in with all kinds of different backgrounds, all kinds of different skill levels, all kinds of different motivations, and how can you find a common frequency to pitch the course on? Um, you're going to have people that are saying, gee, that's boring, other than people that's way up in the sky. So how do you pitch the course when you have that kind of thing going on? So we knew it was going to be enormously difficult. So the first thing that was decided was that we would start the level of difficulty about the middle of Math 12 and go up to about the middle of Math 107 as far as the level of difficulty goes. So that means that we weren't going to do anything with arithmetic and basic algebra. And hi, sir, come on in. The guy runs the place. Oh. Step out? Oh, yeah, no, she's. Just her seat. Yeah. 
Okay. Don't make me confused. That's her seat. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Derek Royster. Yeah, dairy, right there. Dairy Staples. Dairy? Darius. 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 Dairy Staples. Uh, Kelly Tafu. Kelly, hi Kelly. And Mercedes Williams. Hi Mercedes. Great. Is there anybody whose name I did not call? Far from you know. <laughs> okay, cool. So, um, <coughs> She, she, I'm not sure where your one missing student is. She has a pass to come on base, so. <laughs> All right, so really quickly, um, as most of you guys know by now, of course, um, if you do have to remove yourself from this class for any reason, please do be advised of UMUC's drop and withdraw policy. You cannot remove yourself from a class without incurring financial penalties after the first five calendar days of the term. So yes, your first class meeting is on Tuesday. However, the term technically did start yesterday, so you would have until this Friday to remove yourself from the class without incurring financial penalties, okay? Um, of course, that doesn't apply to extenuating circumstances like sudden deployments or TDYs, family emergencies, et cetera. Please do just come. Play with? I'm sorry? Have you to play with? Eh, you know, sure. <laughs> case by case basis, right? Um, so please just do come see us if anything like that happens throughout the course of the session, okay? Um, but beyond that, um, food and drink is definitely allowed in here. Um, just please utilize the trash bag that Dr. Newman has provided, which I'm sure you'll hear all about later. Um, and just make sure that you don't throw any food items away in the bathroom trash cans, because um, that can get pretty gross for people who work here to be walking into the bathroom on the Monday morning and smelling food. So please don't do that. Um, and apart from that, I don't have anything else from you guys. Did you have any questions for me? Thank you all for your time. Thank you. I like questions. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. Well, um, you're more welcome to come to the office tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. Emilio, Jeremiah B., Jeremiah C., Jordan, um, Okay, hi, and by the way, I'm Tom. And um, sometimes known as Mr. Ewing. And sometimes known as Dr. Ewing. And which of these you choose mostly depends uh, on what your last test score was. Goes up and down. Um, so we'll get back to what we're talking about here was the creation of Math 103. And we decided to start at about this level of difficulty, which means that we are taking it as having to be done that your fraction for sentences, basic arithmetic, and simple algebra such as 3x equals 9, x equals 3 are in place. Now, if they're not in place, that means that when we take a test in here, you're going to get the first half of the problem done right because you're bright and we taught you how to do it. But then when you try to conclude the problem with basic arithmetic and algebra, you're going to go south, so you're not going to pass the test. So you've got to have this solid foundation. Now, if you don't have this solid foundation, then you're probably looking at eight weeks of discomfort, and then another eight weeks after that repeating the course. So this week, I want you to keep your eye on your own self-check, whether you have this eight background foundation. And if you don't, then you want to make the call <coughs> as to whether you should drop back, pick it up, come back in eight weeks, I'll be here and I'll take the course again and be comfortable now and be comfortable then, rather than uncomfortable both times. So if you do decide to drop back, uh, you'll take Math 009 online, because we don't teach it face to face, but I'll support you every Saturday afternoon from two to four, come on in, if you take that, and I'll work you through that, and then you'll come on back in June, and join the club again, so it's not a big problem. But um, it's very much miserable for you if you decide to gut it out, I'm going to do it, I'm going to give it my best shot, I'm going to do it. I had a young lady that did that, she gave it her best shot for eight weeks. Uh, of course, she was just out of the high school, so she hadn't really had too much judgment evolution yet, so she gave it her best shot a second time, and came back for a third time to keep giving it her best shot with the same results. 
because the problem was not MAP 103, the problem was back then. So uh, we do want to address that the first week. When I was introduced to the creation of this course by the guy who created it, who is also the guy that wrote the book, um, in the seminar in which he presented, I said, how do you handle the fact that people are coming in with different backgrounds and different skill levels because there's no placement test? He says, we ignore it. I say, well, what do you do when there's some people aren't catching on during the class because they aren't ready to leave them Okay, so I sat down and tried to ignore it myself. But at the end of the talk, I asked him, I said, well, what happens at the end of the eight weeks? Um, and he says, well, we give them a final exam, give them grades. I say, okay, well, about how many, what percent of D's and F's do you get? He said, we get about 25% D's and F's. And that's when I hit the floor. Because in my 412 years of teaching for Maryland, I get about 1 or 2% D's or F on the high. I just don't get them. And the reason we don't get them uh, is because uh, we harass the students until they work. And then we do get results. So that does take place. But these placement tests did seem to work, and they did seem to, did seem to put people in the right place. But I realized that every one of those 25% Ds and Fs went through eight very uncomfortable weeks, and they hadn't gained anything for it. So I've decided to do what's called TQ, which you are experiencing right now, and it's called Tom's Tough Talk. And what I'm doing is laying it out front, putting it on the table. And once I do that, then I'm going to revert to my own sweet good nature self. That many of you have heard stories about. Uh, so that's not going to be continuing. But we do want to try to get these D's and F's the first week. So now that I've been teaching this course for four or five years, I still continue to get 1 or 2% D's or F's. I don't get that 25% after eight weeks. The reason is that we try to find them in week one, not week eight. And if you're headed for D or F, then to make yourself comfortable, then what you want to do is rectify the background situation and come back later, rather than grind it through and have that happen to you. So if you decide that uh, it's you that I'm being talked about at the end of this week, uh, then you can make the call as to whether to drop back but if you make the call to drop back, I'll support you. And if you make the call to continue, I'll also support you. Because you're adults who make your own decisions and whatever call you make, uh, I've got your back on that. But if you don't have the solid background and if you decide to continue, you've got to expect two results. One, you won't get the grade you want, disappointment. And two, you won't learn as much as I want you to learn, second disappointment. So that would be the projected outcome if you do decide to continue. Um, now, um, people in here generally produce pretty good grades. For example, a year ago, we had a class of 24 students, we got 22 A's. And that happens quite, quite frequently. Uh, last time we had maybe 12 students and 8 or 9 A's. Uh, we tend to get high grades in here, and um, hopefully that's going to continue this time. But I don't give you your grade, I just add up the numbers. So it's not that I gave 22 grades, people got 22 A's. And so I have no hesitation in giving 22 A's. I equally have no hesitation in giving 22 F's. So I just add up the numbers and whatever they add up to uh, is what you walk out of here with as far as your grade goes. And that brings us to something that uh, we have to lay out on the table also. The way that I'm wired is I get excited when I see learning takes place. That's what clicks for me. Uh, that's my whole goal in here is to have learning take place. Then I feel that it was a successful course. So my uh, thing is to have the learning happen. Now you and I are natural enemies, and you know it and I know it. Hi, sir. And so we might as well lay it on the table and put it out in front of us. Um, I am interested in you learning as much as possible, irrespective of the grade you get. That's where I'm coming from. You're interested in getting the highest possible grade, irrespective of how much you learn. Because I was a student too, I know what GPA means. So you've got to do that. So as long as we respect each other's position, and I do respect yours, uh, then we'll be fine about that. So that's the motivation for that I'm going to encourage. Now, we've got a splendid book here, 
And in a moment, I'll get to the fact that uh, most of you are expected to have the book right here on day one. Uh, it's a very, very good book. Um, and we're going to work our way through it. But first, I want to ask you this question. Are you going to learn how to do math by reading this book? Pick an answer. Depending on the student. That's a good, that's a good, you know, um, good cover book faces answer. It's really true. Okay, anybody else? No. Choice. No. Okay, the, I'm looking for a no. You're not going to learn it by reading this book. You're not going to learn how to do math. You're going to learn how to read math. Okay, now our second question. Are you going to learn to do math by listening to me? Go ahead, I can take it. Still hurts. Okay. Now, what's the only way you're going to learn how to do math? With practice with. By doing math. The only way you're going to learn how to do math is by doing math. And I know that. And since I'm motivated in seeing you do learn math, and I know the only way that you're going to learn to do math is by doing math, then I make sure you do a lot of math. So we do have assignments in here. We do have assignments in here because that's where the learning takes place. Um, now, <coughs> some people object to homework because, yes, ma'am, you object to homework. You object to homework. <laughs> that was your way for that canal. Okay, good. Okay, that's been registered. I, that, that remark. <laughs> canal objects to homework. <laughs> okay, um, now the other student who objected to homework uh, made the statement that I understood everything you did on the board. I followed you completely. Why should I have to do it myself? And um, so I tried that point of view out myself. I went down to the gym, found the team basketball coach for the base. I said, coach, I want to be on the team. He had the respect not to laugh. <laughs> but he said, can you dunk a basketball? I said, no, coach. But I understand how to dunk a basketball. So there's a bit of a difference between understanding how it's done and doing it yourself. Now, your learning doesn't start until you walk out of here, pick up a blank sheet of paper. That's when your learning starts. If you watch me do a problem on the board, the only thing you learned is that I know how to do the problem. And I can make it easy for you. I, I can do it okay. So your learning starts when you go home, take out the blank sheet of paper, and try to do it yourself. Suddenly, it's a whole different world. And if you push through on that, then you internalize the stuff and you learn how to do it yourself. Um, now, for that reason, this course, as all university courses do, operates on what's called the two-for-one rule. That means it is expected that you will spend two hours out of class for every hour in class. Now, that doesn't mean that you're slow or that you didn't get it. The course is designed that you will spend two hours out of class for every hour in class so that you're ready for the next class. Because once again, the learning doesn't start till you go home. That's when the learning starts, when you actually try to do the stuff yourself. Now, um, if you go to a stateside university and you register as a full-time student, sit down with a counselor, and they'll register you for 15 class hours a week. And he said, wait a minute, I said full-time. What's this 15 business? I can do that in my head. And she says, well, didn't you ever hear the two-for-one rule? And you don't want to be ignorant. Sure, of course I did, yeah. So she spells it out anyway. Every university course is designed that you will spend two hours out of class for every hour in class. And that's when the learning takes place. So let's do the arithmetic. What's two times 15? And plus the 15 in class? 45, so you're a full-time student. So that's how it happens. Now, the two-for-one rule applies to average university courses. Your math course is, for whatever reason, is held to be a little bit more difficult. And so the rule that applies is the three-for-one rule. But I'll be satisfied for the two-for-one rule. So now, as you sit here in that chair, the very fact that you're in that chair tells me that you're promising me that you've got 10 hours a week outside of class to spend on the course. Now, if you don't, Nora's still in her office, and she's just waiting for you to come take care of that problem. 
because uh, it will take that. It will take that. Now, if you don't have 10 hours a week to devote to the class, then the first thing you might want to think about doing is rearranging your life so that you free up 10 hours a week to take for the course, because it will take that. Now, if you don't have 10 hours a week and you can't rearrange your life to free, free up 10 hours a week, you still want to take the course, then I'll support you one more time. Uh, I love teaching Maryland students. You are adult, serious, mature, disciplined, uh, and it's a joy to teach you. I mean, you do your job all day, you come to class, you go home, you keep your spouse happy, and I admire everybody doing all those things. Compare that with teaching a couple of spoiled, rotten 17 and 18 year olds at Riverside Community College and grinding through that all the time. Uh, so it's a real pleasure to be here. So I respect whatever decision that you make. Um, but uh, to succeed in this course, it's going to take um, out of class time. And, and quite a bit of it. So there are various points I just want to stop and say. Uh, are there any questions, comments, remarks? I've said some stuff. Anything to say about that? Okay, uh, I can tone it down a little, get a little bit sweeter, more gentle, uh, now that we've gone through the hard stuff. Um, what I did, so that we can get a running start today, was I tried to ensure by emails and by posting it on the website that everyone would arrive with either an e-file or a hard copy of the um, textbook today. So you, could you please smile if you have a copy of the uh, textbook today, hard copy or e-file, okay? Good. Now, if you don't, we need to rectify that as soon as possible. And I'll show you immediately after class how to use the LEO website to get the PDF file and to make use of it. If you don't have a copy with you today, we'll try to share um, color printouts. 50 cents a page? Okay. They sure are pretty. No, but I don't do them. Okay, and uh, we'll try to get you to share something uh, with, with a classmate just for the day. But we are off and running, and we will start the class today. It will be tonight's assignment, and um, uh, the textbook is needed. We will use the textbook every day, so please do bring it. And um, people have asked me earlier today, they said, Tom, I want to do all the assignments in the course tonight, so can you please tell me what all of the assignments for the whole eight weeks are? So, okay, I printed them out. So if anybody wants to finish up tonight. I'm sorry, you object to one. Okay, now we will meet 16 times, that's twice a week for eight weeks, and each class generates an assignment. So the first um, assignment is called A1, that's tonight's assignment, out of tonight's class. And as you see, we'll cover in your textbook sections uh, 1.1, 1 1.2, and 1.3. And then on Thursday, we will do A2, which is section 1.4. You say, hey, that's a lot easier, just one section. No, think about it. <laughs> right, think about it. Alex has caught on. If I only assign you one section, you should be terrified. Because uh, that means that one has probably got a little oomph to it. <laughs> yeah, right, slow you down a little. Okay, now, uh, every Saturday afternoon from 2 to 4, I will be in this room for you, which workshop, then it's optional. I have no agenda. Come in. If you want to see a problem, we'll do a problem. If you want to see the topic reviewed, we will review it. If you don't say anything, I don't say anything. So it's student-driven. Saturday afternoon, 2 to 4, in this room. Feel free to come. You can bring your kids if you have to, then we put you in the playground next school. And I go back and forth in the rooms. Um, it's free form. You can come late, leave early, drop in, drop out. And a year or two ago, we had three guys who uh, came in 2 o'clock, sat right down on three seats, and opened their books, started to work. 
So I waited for questions. At three o'clock, nothing. Four o'clock, they closed their books, got up, went home. So next Saturday, they came back, sat down, did the same thing. Fine. Did the same word. Third Saturday, I figured it out. No TV, no neighbors, no kids pulling at their pants, no honey-do list, no distractions of any kind, a quiet, safe, structured place to come and do their work, and they spotted it and used it. And it was so easy to do. They just said, honey, I got a class, got to go. <laughs> and I don't even know if they worked on math. They did. But you can use those two hours for anything you want. It's structured. It's a safe, quiet place. Come in, do your other homework, sleep, meditate. Um, it's all good. Okay. So it's, it's a good two hours. Use it for what you want every Saturday. Um, now, sometimes people aren't aware of just how dangerous it is to leave all your test preparation go until the night before the test. <laughs> Alex has found this out. I found this out. Usually you find this out the first time or two you try it. Then you realize that you've got to do things every night. You can't leave it all to the night before, especially in a class where there's a lot of material. So just in case there's somebody that hasn't learned that yet, I've scheduled our first test fairly quickly for one week for tonight. So, um, this is the way the test is going to be um, written. Every test, every problem on the test will be a homework problem. There won't be any new problems on the test. Every problem on the test is selected from the homework pool that we've done. Some of the people lightening up, smiling. Hey, yeah, I, I can do that. And so the psychological among you are realizing Hey, he's just trying to manipulate us. He knows we learn by doing. He wants us to learn, so he's going to motivate us to do the homework by putting the homework problems on the test. That's exactly what I'm doing. Exactly what I'm doing. Because I know you learn by doing, and I'm totally satisfied if out of a pool of some 80 or 100 problems, uh, you can solve 20 randomly selected problems. I'm satisfied that you achieve the skill level we want you to achieve in here. So the diligent among you who will make sure that you know how to do all those 80 problems will succeed very highly. And those of you that say, ah, oh, just work them out in the test, I'm smart, uh, will find that the test is designed that you can't do that. There's not enough time. So you're expected to have already internalized all the 80 problems, and you'll just come in and run it down. So that's be what we have in mind for the test. Now, you immediately see that there's a potential problem here. And that is that as you study your homework to prepare for the test, what if your homework answers are wrong? You're studying the wrong answers. And you're gonna put those answers on the test and you say, wait a minute, this is an impossible situation, and it is. So we have a solution to that also. So you see those two big whiteboards back there, okay? Now, when you come in on Thursday, what you guys are going to do is you're going to put the A1 problems up on the whiteboards. I'll go around, I'll give each person a few problems. You go up, claim your space, and you write down your solutions to those few problems. Not for me to look at, I'm not gonna look at it. They're for your fellow students. Because after yours are up there, then you take your homework and you go around and look at the other solutions and compare them with your homework and the other students are comparing theirs with yours, what you're doing is checking each other off, making sure that everyone has a good solution. So if you find some discrepancy, then call over that to student and discuss it. Usually you get it resolved. If you don't bring me in, I'll do it on the front board. But a lot of learning takes place when you go up to those whiteboards and um, cross-check with each other about the solutions. So at the end of the whiteboard time, you know you've got good time. Now, this puts a responsibility on you of participation. Now, if you come in and say, I didn't do my homework. So when everybody goes up to the whiteboard, you just sit here. That means the problems that you would have put up there are now loaded on your classmates' shoulders. And they have to do extra whiteboard work because you didn't do your share. 
and that takes more time out of the class. We run short of time. They get overloaded. Problems take place. So all of those problems are removed if you decide right now that you know, you're going to help the classmates out by coming in every day with your homework, the homework done. And that's expected of you in this course because this is a highly interactive participatory course. I believe in hands-on teaching, which is why they don't let me teach anatomy. <laughs> But still, it's important that you come in ready to contribute your part of the assignment onto the whiteboards for the sake of your classmates. Agree? So when you write your problems up on the board, don't just sit down and say, I know mine are right. Because what's the only way that your classmates are also going to know that those are right? Or what's the only way they're going to find out one of theirs is wrong is through you. So you circulate and cross-check all the other stuff on the whiteboards um, with what you've got. Uh, in eight weeks, you guys will be one family. There will be a lot of bonding that takes place in here, believe me. And um, it's a memorable experience. Um, okay, so what's the sign for tonight is A1. And um, it will ultimately be collected. Now, since the test involves those problems, then your A1, your test block one, homework is due to the class after the test. Keep it until the class after the test to which it supplies. Then I'll collect it from you. Now I grade it by the ounce. I don't look at your solutions to see if they're right or wrong, because they're only for yourself. I just make sure that you did attempted each problem, you get full credit for the homework. So homework's not a big deal in here. If you're a little bit late on it, I can give you a little slack. But the homework is due at whiteboard time. That's when we need you to have it in your hand to go up there and, and contribute to the class. Now, if you see problems with mission or sickness or something that you're not going to be able to carry your share of the white load or the whiteboard, then let me know. And if there's only one or two of you, then we can work with you um, and um, um, allow you to just sit during the whiteboard session. Of course, you get a lot of strange looks from your classmates, but that's not my problem. And um, then if there's too many of you, then we have some kind of problem with not enough people getting stuff on the whiteboard. So we have to look at it as it evolves. But by and large, uh, we need you to have that done. Okay? Now, don't feel that you shouldn't come to class just because you don't have the whiteboard work done. Do come to class. I mean, it's not that serious. Okay? It's not that big a deal. Uh, now, for the same reason, um, we're going to give you your first purchase item. What I have here is a dry erase board marker. And I request, require that each of you bring in one such of these next class for whiteboard work. Now please bring a black, purple, dark blue type of color. I mean the pinks and yellows are beautiful, but you can't read them from more than six inches away. So please try to get a nice dark color. Now, if you forget, I can rent you one. So please try to bring in a marker for the whiteboard. Um, no, once again, pause. Comments, remarks, questions on what we've gone uh, through so far. Okay, if people starting to feel that it's going to be a strict, serious course, that's half true. It has to be that because it's a math course. Now, the reason that we teach math courses is as a service. Because, so in your economics course, a sociology course, when the instructor comes to a graph or a simple algebraic equation, he doesn't have to stop and teach it to you in every one of those classes. We do it all in one centralized place. But we have to make sure that he doesn't have to stop. We have to make sure that you know what you need to know in order to do that kind of math in your other courses. So that's why the math course exists. Now, the Math 107 course that we replaced with this, I like very much because it was full of abstract, beautifully, totally useless mathematics that you would never use again in your life. It was an instructor's dream. Um, and I did realize the impracticality of it. Now, the course that we replaced it with, Math 103, is absolutely beautiful. I really, really like this course because it's very, very practical. 
What we teach you in here are things like mortgages, annuities, how to gamble, other types of things that are very, very useful in your everyday life. The textbook that we used to use was a magnificent textbook. The reason we stopped using it is debatable, but the reason that the administration gives is that um, we don't want the students to have to pay these prices anymore, like $120. I thought it was worth it. But now, why is there a picture of, what's the picture of, on the cover? What's it of? Who can see it? A cow. Now, it's very symbolic that this guy put a picture of a cow on a cover because he's milking you. Six months later, another edition, agreed? So you can't use the old books. You have to keep upgrading it. It's an industry. He's got a whole team of editors and publishers. Uh, it's a business. So Maryland, the university decided you shouldn't have to pay that anymore. So they went to freebies called OERs, Open Educational Resources. And most of them are terrible. Most of them are terrible. And um, having used them for a few years, I've decided that the textbooks were worth their money, and the freebies are worth exactly what you pay for them, or less. Uh, but this is one exception. This is a well-written freebie. It's very, very useful. So uh, there's no problem with that. Now, the guy that wrote this book, <coughs> he's actually a pretty likable guy. He used to do a lot of teaching. Now he writes a lot of textbooks, about 15 of them. And um, sometimes he gets in a bad mood in the morning. So he puts a particular problem in there for students to solve, and suddenly he feels better. You can spot these problems when you come across them. But he also got some quotes in here that deserve some thought. For example, one of the quotes he's got in here was, my wife and I were very happy for 20 years. Then we met. <laughs> bitter, he's a bit bitter. Okay, now the other thing I have to tell you about is that we've got a lot of resources for you. And, um, one of the resources that we've got for you um, is find in just a moment. So the other resources that's easier for you to find for you is right here. And it'll be a month coming up too. For whatever reason. Oh that's great. The tall guy that was in here just totally mucked up his hand. He fixed it. <laughs> so we'll look at things down that way. Um, okay, so I'll bring those up. We've got lots of time to bring those up. One at a time are the resources that are available to you. Um, hmm. But I'll describe one of them. A year ago in Okinawa, um, when I was teaching Math 103, I taped each one of the classes. And I put the videos out on YouTube, and I put the links to each one of those videos on your LEO website. So if on your LEO website you go to content and click, then you will see a choice called your face-to-face -face videos your classroom videos, in-class videos. And if you click on that, you will see the videos for A1, A2, A3, A4. So if you miss a class, as Momoko is missing the class, uh, then you don't have to miss the class. You can immediately go home and watch the video and come back to the next class just as if you were here. In fact, you're required to watch that video before you come back. Because when you come back, we want you to be current. 
Because if you do nothing from the last class you were in through the class that you miss, when you come back, you're going to miss that class too because you don't know what's going on. So you miss two classes. So if you miss a class for legitimate reasons, deployment or anything, then watch the video for the class that you missed and pick it up. The assignments you already have. So you can come back just as if you were here. Now this is also true is if you think that I presented something a little too fast. Sometimes you get told that I presented things a little too fast. And the unchangeability of that is that there's a certain amount of material that we have to get through. And if I go any slower, we don't get through it. So I have to go at that speed. Uh, most people find it fairly comfortable, but some don't. So if you wish that it was slower, then you can go home and freeze frame whatever frame you want to and look at it for as long as you want to. So you can set your own pace. Okay. Now, some people, usually when I started the video, it was before students came in. So I'm sort of sitting here 15, 20 minutes waiting for students. And one person wanted to use the videos, but he didn't know how to fast forward. So he's just sitting there watching that 20 minutes, and he says, geez, I can't just keep doing that. So we taught him how to fast forward. So you do want to be able to fast forward and get to the spots that you want. Now, one of the reasons that I bring this up is because the last video group that I made was adequate, uh, but not really as good as I wanted to be. So I think it's time for a new round. So I'm taking this class. Now, I cannot continue to take this class if anybody doesn't want to take it. But you're right. And I respect that right and will enforce it. So all you have to do is um, tap me on the shoulder privately or say it publicly right now. It doesn't matter. And we will not continue to take this class. But the advantages to you and your classmates are enormous if we do do that. And to those who take the course after you are, are quite enormous. So it would be a very significant contribution uh, if we went ahead and do that, do that. But we don't have to do it. It's a right and a privilege uh, that you have. Uh, I have tapes of every course I've taught, and they turn out to be quite successful use. They are extremely necessary if somebody gets a two-week deployment. I mean, what are they going to do? They have to drop the course if they don't have the tapes. So that's when they're coming extremely handy. And people tend to get deployed quite often. Uh, the other time they come in handy is if the course has to be taught online. Now, Math 103 is never taught online, but the others are. And the big complaint of online courses is that you don't get the face-to-face -face experience. So the tapes rectify that. Uh, I have tapes of Math 107 that are very much appreciated by the Math 107 classes I teach online. So it's a great asset. So if it can continue, it would be a um, good contribution. Uh, speaking of which, this course, Math 103, entitles you to go forward to a statistics class 200, which is required for many of your programs. So it will admit you to that class. Now, if you require calculus, in your program, calculus in your program, or if you just want to take calculus, uh, then this course will not admit you to it. So you have to take the Math 107 in order to get into the calculus. So we make sure that you know that from day one so that you can pull that switch if you want to. Once again, if you go into the Math 107 sequence, you might even get me as your online instructor, and I'll continue to help you on Saturdays. Uh, the door is open on Saturdays. Anybody on base or base can come in. Uh, we've had three, four people wanted to take the office of candidate test. We uh, tutored them, pushed them through that. Uh, we have all sorts of issues come up. God, divorce, philosophy, it's all on the table. So um, it's an open session. And you'll see refugees from other courses sitting alongside you, like statistics students and things of that sort. So it's an intermittent time. Um, the other two resources that I'm trying to point out to you are that we do have a tutor available to you. Now, this lady, she took this course in the summertime, last summer, and of the five tests, she got four 100s, and the other test she totally messed up, got a 99. Uh, so she's very, very adept in the subject, 
and she likes to tutor, and she communicates very, very well. And I'm going to flash this way, and I'm going to put her uh, way to contact her on the board, and um, uh, her cost is free. She just loves it. She's a good person. So we have a tutor that's available for you also. So there's no shortage of resources. Uh, I can be available for you uh, personal meetings during the day and things like that if need be. So we want to give you everything that you need in order to succeed in the course. Now, we've gotten through a lot of this material, but we haven't addressed yet the most important question of the whole evening, and that is what time's break. So generally we take it around 4, 5.40, or 5.50, somewhere in that area, uh, depending on how it goes. Probably do the same tonight. We are running a little bit short of oxygen. I think I'm talking to that. It's always sunshine. Now, um, it's time to pause just for a moment and ask once more if there are any questions, comments, or remarks. We're talking about administrative things or structural reports. Now, I've got to give you a warning. If there aren't any comments, remarks, suggestions, we're going to have to start doing some math. That generally produces a few questions. So dig deep. Anybody, anything anybody can think about asking. Okay, what I'm going to do is pass out the syllabus, which is our last administrative document, and then we will start doing the math. Unfortunately, I don't really use it, read it for the class is over, and I trust you guys. If you're, going to, if you're not here for a class, I'm going to assume it's for a very legitimate reason. And next time I see you, then you'll just tell me what that legitimate reason was. Um, you can try to email me if you want, but don't get upset if you think that it didn't go through or something like that. Uh, we're a little bit um, cooperative on, on those kinds of issues. Okay? Uh, office hours are Tuesday, Thursday, 3.30, 4.30, uh, by appointment, and also Saturday afternoons. Course descriptions and outsides. And now to next page, something none of you really want to go to, because I know that all of you are in here out of your undying love of mathematics, and not having anything to do with the grades you get. It's not important to you. But I am required to go through it. So we will have four tests in here of my making. The first one's next Monday. These are block tests. That means that we study for two weeks and we test on that material. Then we're not tested on it again. We study another two weeks and we're tested on that material. So we take four block tests. Nothing from okay. You might think of it as four finals if you want to look at it that way. So we'll take four block tests. And those are 60% of your grade. Now, there is a final exam in here, not because I want it to be. I want there to not be a final exam. I think the block tests are sufficient, but it's not my call. The creator of the course, who's in charge of the course, says there will be a final exam. Not only does he say there will be a final exam, he says that he will make it up. I don't even get to make it up. And he passes it out. So every Math 103 course in the whole world, Mars, Jupiter included, takes the same final exam. Some of you say that's scary. It's not, because I take care of it for you. It's worth 25% of your grade, okay? Now, um, since I don't make up the questions, it doesn't have much to do with me. But I'm gonna share a secret with you. Um, any of you that have taken a structured systematic test before, like SAT, ACT, GRE or any one of those tests, uh, we'll notice that a lot of the questions from year to year are repeated. 
And if they're not repeated verbatim, they're very identical to the questions that were there the year before. So with that understanding, is the best way to prepare for a standard test, such as your final, to go through the book again, or to do old tests, to do old finals from the previous years, which would be the most productive way. But, so what we're going to do the last week of the course is we're going to go through previous finals so that you get a depth at how to solve the types of problems that are going to be on your final. So I'm teaching this course in seven weeks, not eight. And the last week I devote to coaching you to get ready for the final. And it usually has pretty satisfactory results. So I wouldn't be too afraid of the final, certainly not. So it is 25% of your grade. Now, the remaining 15% of your grade comes from something called participation. This is a participatory course, and we do expect you to participate. Now, if you have trouble with that and don't want to participate, uh, then there might be uh, another venue for you that's more suitable, because we do require you to participate in here. For most of you, it comes natural. I mean, as members of the military, they have high degrees of participation anyway. Teamwork's what it's all about. So that just continues in here. Uh, it's broken into four areas. Homework, which is graded by the ounce. Don't worry about the ragged edges. It doesn't have to be tight, neat. Uh, just pass it in as you did it. That would be fine. Don't put any extra time on it. Um, attendance. At Harvard University, about 24 years ago, they received a grant from the U.S. government, $300,000, to study the relationship between learning and attendance. Uh, they went into cost overrun and extensions, but 12 years later they published their conclusion. You can't learn if you're not there. I think I could have told them that a lot cheaper. But it turns out to be true. You can't learn if you're not here. Now, since I'm interested in your learning, therefore I'm interested in your, what, being here, right? So therefore, what you do is you have required attendance. Now, everyone gets one free absence. Momoko just used hers. And um, after that, we start docking you a point for each missed class. That's not legitimate, like um, mission or me medical or MBA finals or something like that. Um, then we have to dock you a point for not being here or you're not contributing, you're not learning. Uh, same with punctuality. I want to thank everyone for their punctual arrival today, and that is required to continue. Because um, if you are not here at the start of class, since everybody's bonded into the same family, everybody looks at your empty chair, they're concerned, what's wrong, where's that person, is there something going on? And they can't learn, they can't pay attention. Finally, you wander in, and everyone breathes a sigh of relief, forgets fully what we're talking about. Uh, I lose it. I lose it easily anyway. And I don't know what I'm saying. And so the person sits down, says to the person next to him, what I miss? And all these side conversations, chaos breaks out. So we just can't have you coming in late. Um, we need your synergy. Everybody has to be here at the same time, tuned in, and we start together. The same is true for coming back from break. Uh, break is 10 minutes long, and we want you to come back at the end of the 10 minutes so we can all start as one. So it's the same requirement, punctuality. Professionalism. Okay. You are expected to um, behave professionally in here. Now, um, <coughs> that doesn't mean that at each class, sometime during the class, you have to catch my eye, raise your hand, Tom, check me out. I've got the professional points today. I'm looking professional, right? No, you don't have to worry about that because you just got them. I gave them to you right now. The only thing you can do is lose it. Okay? For example, if you throw a chair at another student, you're going to lose a point. Two of you hit them. Okay? So as long as you don't do anything out of the ordinary, then eight weeks from now you will end up with all the same professional points that you get right now. Okay, so that's where your grade's coming from. And um, so are there any comments, remarks, questions? I think we will be able to finish this before the break which would be nice. Now we have a series of bullets down here, some of which are going to stab you right in the heart. Study time, two or three hours the amount of lecture time. Attendance required. Homework assignments required. Okay. 
So let's turn the page to the top of the next page. Class participation points required. Um, now, near the middle of the page, attendance, one more time. There's a lot to learn and you can't learn if you're not there. If you're expecting a long absence during the term, let me know as soon as possible. We have to talk over your options. Usually we can work with you. Sometimes it's just too long. Functionality required, professional attitude required. Class discussions required. Telephones near the bottom of the page now will be off, not silent during class, but off mode, uh, unless you have mission or family or some other reasonable exception, just let me know, it's fine. But otherwise, uh, we want them off. Uh, eating or drinking uh, has been a thorn in our sides in this building. First, the Air Force says no eating and drinking at all. Then they don't enforce it, they leave it up to the instructor. So I went along with it, I said no eating or drinking. Uh, then I noticed that Maryland students were pretty good drinkers. I mean, they didn't really leave a mess when they drank. So I said, okay, let's drink. Then one day in another class, I saw a student actually eating an apple without drooling the slightest drip. Everything was clean. He put it down in a napkin, wrapped the napkin around it, and I said, Maryland students can eat too. So then I gave a green light to eating. So people went to Mokoteki, they went to the pizza, and we had grease and ketchup all over the tables. So we had to back off a little bit. And we say, okay, eating is okay, but we like the clean, simple, chemical, uh, process uh, vending machine types of foods. Uh, if you need a fork to eat it with, it's out. We don't want the meals, we don't want the sandwiches uh, because they tend to be a little bit too messy. So if you if you need those, we do have an eating room down by the vending machine and it can be used for that purpose. But we do want to try to keep the classrooms neat. And the ESO, who is an angel, she's absolutely wonderful, uh, has a real problem with people stuffing leftover food and um, drink cans and all kinds of stuff in the bathroom um, containers. Any of you that have walked in there, you normally expect it as a normal day to be overflowing and water falling, falling down onto the floor. And um, she's left it to us to voluntarily have that not happen. I got an email from Yokota the other day that said from now on only water in the classrooms. Only water. The ESO went with us one more time. She said, one more time, try to clean it up, try to fix it. So I bought in a garbage bag. We will take out our own garbage. Now the person that gives the worst wrong answer in the class that day, at the end of the class, will take that bag and collect all the garbage in the class and take it to the shed outside the door and drop it in the shed. If nobody makes any mistake at all, it'll be me, or some volunteer, or something like that, okay? But one way or another, we will get our trash out the building. Uh, we won't put it in those trash cans, so that we can continue to have, I can continue to have my coffee in the classroom, and you can continue to have whatever it is you have in the classroom. So we're gonna try that solution now, okay? Uh, now the chairs and buildings, we, chairs, we want to last a long time, so please don't put feet, I mean, shoes up in the chairs, um, and turning the page. You will need a scientific calculator. You will need a scientific calculator. Um, is that a scientific calculator? Can someone hold up a scientific calculator? There it is. That's a little bit overkill, smaller. The smaller window. TI-30, something like that. Okay. Um, now, what, if you don't have a scientific calculator, then the best thing for you to do is to go down to the BX and pay around nine or ten dollars for a scientific calculator. Texas Instrument 30 or something equivalent. They've got little windows on the top. They do everything you need to do in this course. Now, some of you say, hey, I'm going to go for the TI-80. That does everything, even cooks breakfast, and it's going to make the class easier for me. Wrong. Because it does so much that the learning curve is so long, you take eight weeks just to learn how to multiply two numbers. So you've already got one of these monsters and you know how to use it, keep using it. 
But if you're going to buy one for this course, don't buy that one because the learning curve is too long. And we're just going to do fairly simple things. So every once in a while, we get a student that says, hey, I can use this dollar fifty one that I got out of the Cheerios box. It works fine. And I say, does it take exponents? He says, no, I just multiply them out. That's much so um, I say, OK. So on a test, we had 2 to the 17th power. And he missed one. So next day, he got his $10 sign. So some of you say, can I use my phone? Because your phones have beautiful calculators. Or your tablets. I'm a very naive, trusting person. And when I was first asked that, I said, sure, why not? And the rest of the class just laughed. And I have no idea why. First test came, and this guy Googled the whole test. So I got educated, reality check. So for that reason, um, your phone and, cal and tablet calculators are fine for classrooms. But when you come to test, no. You've got to have an ordinary electronic calculator for test purposes, because there has been abuse. There has been abuse. And it was repeated just two weeks ago also. So there are people that uh, do that. And believe it or not, they take Maryland courses. Uh, so we do need the electronic calculator for testing purposes. Uh, the use of gum, salary is not permitted in the classroom. That's a request from some other students, so we're just passing it on. As always, in a university setting, profanity is also not allowed. I had a student come up to me, object very violently, says I never use any F profanity, and he used it right there. Because to him, it's normal speech. And maybe to a lot of you also, that's military, right? But there is a big world out there, and sooner or later you're going to go out for your second life, and you're going to find it's a little bit different. Well, it's always been a little bit different in the university. Uh, so we have the profanity light is off uh, in the room. And also, once class starts, now um, two things go on. Um, first, before class, the 10 minutes or so before class, some students, they come in and they're finishing up their homework. And out of respect for that, we try to talk quietly, not loudly socialize, or do those things that would interfere with what they're doing. We just try to give them the space to finish up their homework for those last 10 minutes. Doesn't mean we have to sit quietly, because we're here too. But we do have to try not to make it impossible for them to finish up their homework. The second is, when 440 comes, we want the pencils dropped. Uh, we want you to stop doing your homework, stop texting, whatever it is you're doing at 440 and give your full energy participation onto the class right at that time. Okay, we did it. Uh, we're done with all the administrative part of what we have to do the first time. So, one more time. Any comments, remarks, suggestions? Yes, sir. So, we could have one hour. Pardon me, sir? Yes, sir? We're going to have a phone out. For, um, we have a PDF file of the whole book on our phones. Can you use it in class? Uh, could you enunciate those words just a little bit more carefully? I didn't catch the first and last letters of some of the words. Oh, um, yeah. for our phone use during class, yes. if we have the PDF file of the book on yes. our phone, you yes. can have that out. Absolutely right. Now, you can have phones and laptops um, and tablets throughout the class, during ordinary class, as long as the only thing that's on the screen is your PDF file. Now, we have had violators, once again, they just sit there, email the whole class, and so we have to shut down the laptops if that starts to happen, uh, because it's got to be devoted to what we're doing in here. But the answer is yes. Those e-files are um, to be used by you, and you need some kind of screen to use them on. So please use your phones or uh, laptops or tablets uh, for that e-file, not for other reasons, uh, doing class purposes. Very good question. Was your ask you. Um, but uh, again, not doing the test, so, so we have to use calculus. So any other type of stuff? So let's take our 10-minute break. It's 5:44. Come back at uh, 5:54, and we'll start this class. Hi. 5:54.
Wi-Fi? Yeah, it's here. Oh, yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, you got some instructions here. This computer is hardwired network. This Wi-Fi is using. Um, Class another time, are we? We will see you another time.